Yeah, now we live. Yeah, we live. yeah that's what we're talking live. about. Yeah, we live now. Started. I fall asleep. We, 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 we live now. Yeah. Right, we, <laughs> we got we got to share this this mug. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Got to share it up. Share it up with the peoples. With yeah, the we, fans. We, we, we been. You know, I gotta be honest. I'm pretty happy with where we've been lately. I know I was talking about it the other day, but like, you know, people people are still connecting with us, and you know, mm-hmm. vibe and showing us love, and I appreciate that. You know. So, mm-hmm. um, so last show did really good. It was funny too because it, it always seems like uh, it's the ones that we're just kind of like being really chill with and being ourselves on, mm-hmm. you know. Which I mean, we mm-hmm. do on everyone, but like it's almost like the ones that we don't really think about the plan, you know, mm-hmm. are the ones that like go really well, you know. Yeah, the ones that we just kind of go with the plan or go with the vibe. Yeah, you yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. I think like, people just enjoy the authentic, genuine selves or uh, people that we are. You know, I, 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 I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, people don't yeah. like the schedule, man. What's that? People don't like the schedule. They don't like uh, everything being fully organized. Maybe. Oh, I they right, like yeah. the chaos. You know, well, that's what makes us different. Yeah, we there's a lot of chaos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, so look, we live and we got mm-hmm. some things we want to talk about. But mm-hmm. I actually wanted to do something real quick. Okay. If you don't mind. Do it up, man. Do it up. <clears throat> okay, so uh Devon, our good friend of the show, right? Mm-hmm. We have officially completed a new song that is scheduled to be released. Uh about six oh, weeks man. from now, actually. About okay. Six weeks okay. So I wanted to do like you know a song reveal, mm, <laughs> exclusively okay. on the live stream. You know, <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't think we'll have any copyright issues because I. I mean, the <laughs> tower. Right yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, the story with this is I produced and edited it, uh, and mixed it and all that stuff. Um, mm-hmm. Devon, I, I came down there, right? Uh, this is when I was down there in April and met up with Devon and came up with the genesis of this beat in like an hour. And then he had the lyrics ready somehow during that time. Mm-hmm. And we just started, uh, we started going for it, started sending it. So, oh, um, <clears throat> and put it together. So when I was off, not doing anything, uh, because of the surgery, Mm-hmm. That was what I was working on, was putting that together, uh, mixing and everything. And he just hit me with the album artwork today. So, um, yeah, I'm going to give a little bit of a sneak preview here. Going to aim the mic at my speakers. <laughs> Do it, man. <laughs> All right, let's see. Actually, you know what? I got a better idea. That's how I'm going to do this. Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to crank up the hole. It's going to be a little... It's going to be a little ratchet. That's... Nothing wrong with that, though. <laughs> Heck yeah. All right. So we, we connected now. So, yeah. Um, he did all the... I, well, it features... It does feature me. I almost forgot that. <laughs> mm-hmm. It features me for one little verse, you know, because we a tag team duo. We're kind of like a, a... You know, uh, Millie Vanilli. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a little more Millie. He's a little more... Well, actually, I guess I'm a little more vanilla. <laughs> but, <laughs> but anyway, without further ado, this is. It's called Telly, actually. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. Yep. All right. Okay. Here we go. Ready? Standard producer tag. Mm-hmm. Spanish producer tag. Uh-oh. Switch up the slow on it. Okay. Yep. Yeah. 
auto tune. <laughs> I don't know what that means. What you need, what you need. You're not a big up need. I saw the tingle. I saw the tingle. Are you ready for this? Uh oh. You, you don't even know how ratchet I'm about to get. <laughs> what do you think when you see me? Am I time give love for you? Does it mean anything? Don't make me make the move when you know I see the truth in your eyes. Wolf in disguise. Pull me close. Tell me we're all right. Drunken words from sober minds. Yeah. Hey, hey. Okay. I got okay. flow, baby. There I you got go. flow. <laughs> <laughs> I came for him. I came for him right at the neck, bro. <laughs> so we're back to the chorus here. Mm-hmm. Harmonies. Ooh, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. I see you. That's it. That is That's good stuff, man. Called Telly, man. And I honestly think it's our best one mm-hmm. that we've ever put out. Actually, um, most professional sounding, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. So I love it. Um, again, that's going to be coming toward the end of next month, and I will share on here. Um, when the uh, pre-save goes up, because that's how folks be doing things now, just pre-saving stuff <laughs> um, <laughs> on on uh, Spotify and whatnot. So um, mm-hmm. I will share that when it goes live. But uh, I'll probably talk about it again here in a second because I will use the beat from it as the background um, for the intro to the audio mm-hmm. version of the podcast. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, It'll be cool, man. I'm really excited for it. We don't have yeah, a date. Um, actually, you know what? Let me text Devon right now, man. <laughs> Let me text Devon right now. Doing it live, can... man. Yeah, we we doing it live. Uh, I'm gonna say hell yeah. I love this cover even more. Let's do this. I'm live <laughs> on <laughs> on Facebook. Right now for the catch up. When should we <laughs> release this song? Exact date. There we go. Mm-hmm. We'll find out here ASAP. Oh man. I know. I know. So it's about to be a catch up podcast exclusive. We're gonna find out the release date. I know we had talked about late September before. I want to give about six weeks of build up, you know. Mm-hmm. But it's been a while. I've actually been really happy for him. Uh, mm-hmm. he, he posted about it on Instagram the other day, mm-hmm. and all this stuff that I don't think he expected, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's actually a Dallas artist that reached out called Be Right. Mm. Hey, I remember Be Right. That's a throwback, bro. Yeah, man, that is <laughs> one of the first things we learned about Devon. Was his name was mm-hmm. Devon, and he featured on a song with Be Right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but this man literally brought copies of the uh cd to us so we can mm-hmm. listen to that mm-hmm. at, at work <laughs> yeah you gotta have that network going 
So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, so it's kind of a throwback. But anyway, he's gotten some attention off of it, and I'm super happy for him, man. I want him to know, like, <clears throat> he really has put in by relative, like, not that he's not trying at all, because he is, but, mm-hmm. like, by relative standards of people who work on music, he's put in relatively minimal effort and he's already gotten like really good attention on it you know mm-hmm, exactly he has more re- he has more regular listeners on spotify than my band does <laughs> <laughs> i play freaking gigs dude he does. i play live in front of people <laughs> kind of crap is this man why just songs. got that network man it's not even that bro some of it's just uh well so we have this song i hesitate to mention this in the live stream but it's mm-hmm. called Sex Play, right? Mm-hmm. Volume one. <laughs> so apparently there's gonna be a, a sequel to it. And uh 626 views on YouTube, man. Man. Right. Blowing up, man. He doesn't even promote it. By way of comparison, my song Fire Away, which is pretty much the song that I'm known for. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And I play all the time. And I had a freaking lyric video made for mm-hmm. has 500 views. Hey, not too bad, though. It's not bad. Don't get me I wrong. Mean, you, it's not bad. Mm-hmm. And you have to think about two uh, long, like a uh, timeline, right? Yeah. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, sex play has been up for a lot longer than fire away has. Mm, no, not a lot. Not a lot longer. Only actually, it was really about the same time. <laughs> was it? I feel yeah. like it wasn't. Mm-mm. No, it was about the same time, man. Mm. Yep. Yeah, I know. I would love to take what you, <laughs> what, you, you know, your logic that you're spitting here. I really would. But it just isn't right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not right, man. Yeah, well, no, yeah. but it's been about the exact same amount of time man I'm, I'm like dang kind of hoped you know that maybe by some mm-hmm. miracle like the audio version up top here mm-hmm. only has 23 views mm. yep but the video here mm-hmm. 500 506 so I'm going to go to everybody's favorite Dev Omar song that's what he goes by on. <laughs> Again, what the F? Happy anniversary. Everybody's favorite. Mm-hmm. 414 views. Man. For just the audio. He's just moving. This man doesn't promote Jack anything, bro. He never promotes his stuff. He got all these plays on here. Turbulence. Mm-hmm. Hey, the man, hum- it might be the might be the covers. Sometimes the that. covers, because you know, Devon does do a real good job. He be he be really going at it on those uh, on those covers, man. I know it's amazing. And covers um, do matter, uh, especially for thumbnails uh, for YouTube. So, oh, I know. I mean, I'm I'm just glad we haven't gotten a copyright suit yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, granted. With the lights, the last thing we ever put out was 24 views. Dirty. Mm-hmm. My personal favorite. Only got mm-hmm. 19 views. You know? Mm-hmm. But I'm just saying, like, that. that's what I'm trying to tell him. I'm not even being salty about it. I'm trying to tell him, look at all these, uh, th- th- this attention that you're getting. You're, like, not even putting it out there. You're not even trying, man. Mm-hmm. Get all this freaking attention on there, man. So, I tried to tell him. I tried. Mm-hmm. I want to see, uh, I'm like Drake. I tried to show him. Yeah. I want to see if there are any comments on here. When we started Carvana, they- man, get out of here, Carvana. Ain't nobody care about you. Oh, gosh darn ads, man. Ain't trying to have Car- I, haven't, I haven't seen ads on YouTube in ages, man. Oof. Yeah, it must be Sounds nice. Sounds like poor people problems, man. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> <laughs> All of Africa has just left the chat. <laughs> Man. Dang, well, he's, not, he's not reading the text right now. Um, 
You know what? Let me give him a call right quick. Oh, wait. He just read it. He just read it. Hold up. He just read it, man. You just got to give him some time. You know, I Devon know. is, he's a busy man. He's, he's got a lot going he's on. He's available. Know? You just got to get him at the right time. Man. Yeah, you got to catch him at the right time, man. You got to catch him at the right time. That's this all. This is legit for those listening, watching. This is legit what this man told us. He said, I'm always available. You just have to get me at the right time. <laughs> that means you're not always available. Exactly. It's all. like you are contradicting yourself. <laughs> you, are literally, you are inherently not always available by saying that. <laughs> like, <laughs> so um it's funny though it. because he he said it. Um I remember because yeah, he said it and then um you know a few seconds later his brain caught up. And it's like, <laughs> oh wait, that doesn't make any sense. And we we're just like, no, that doesn't make any sense at all. No, man. And then it's funny because then later on, the last the next time that we mentioned it. He's like, man, it sounds right, though. You know, sometimes that works. It's like, no, it doesn't. It still doesn't no, work. But... It doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> you can try to cover up for it all you want. <laughs> oh, man, I mean, also, I, ahead, mean I, will say, I, I will say, though, that um, sometimes, sometimes I do feel like, even though the phrase is contradictory, sometimes I can, I can understand that phrase, you know? Because you sometimes, so? yeah, yeah, because sometimes... I may be in I think I'm I'm I might be actually quoting a little bit of what Devon was telling me last time that we talked about it. But sometimes you may be technically available, but you aren't mentally or emotionally available. Uh and so you yeah. gotta catch that person at the right time when they are mentally and emotionally available. So maybe right, right. maybe if you wanna contort some stuff around, that kind of works. You know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I get. <laughs> Still that. sounds kind of like nonsense. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. It's it's a bit of a stretch, but I get it. it. Makes sense to me. Friday, okay. New music Friday. That's what it is. September seventeenth, man. That's the release oh, date. Oh man, here we go. September seventeenth. So y'all mark your calendar. September seventeenth is coming live. Also, before we get started here. Mm-hmm. Yo, let's shout out the baddest work wife in the game, mm. Amanda. Mm -hmm. Remember, we had her on a few weeks back. Oh, she got yeah. Herself, she got herself a good, clean Emmy, man. Hey, that's amazing. That's really, really know. awesome. Well, she that is it with congratulations right there. I know. Shout out to the baddest work wife in the game. <laughs> Who also She's got that hustle fact, and that grind, man. Yeah. Uh, also, fun fact, she had to take a week off from anchoring because she lost her voice from yelling A too hard at a party. <laughs> 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 oh, man. That's the most Amanda story of all time. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, ah! She had a video of it, too. She had this poll, she had this poll mm -hmm. that was like, uh, how did Amanda lose her voice? Was it yelling Hey, or hey, it's <laughs> <laughs> so funny. So, anyway, like I said, shout out to the best work wife in the world, around all around. Oh, hold up, what did Devon say? <laughs> Devon said, Hey, too. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and start recording now that we got all these details sorted out here. And, mm -hmm. uh, I think we'll keep it a relatively short episode, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we really have one main topic, and mm -hmm. I kind of know something I want to talk about off the top here. So, um, yeah. So here we go. Let's do this thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. We recording now. Oh, man. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. How do I want to do this? Mm. All right. <laughs> I'm trying to think of something you got clever it? to say. Yeah, I mean, I know what I want to talk about. I'm just trying to think of something clever to say off the top. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. Three, two, one. All right, man, we're back. <laughs> mm -hmm, we I'm are. not talking about you and me, though. I'm not talking about you and me. Oh. No. I know. We, we never left, bro. We never <laughs> left. 
That but, is true. Uh, that is true. We're not but like yeah. back like uh, Bill and Ted. <laughs> <laughs> no, nor their adventures. But uh, mm-hmm. Devon, Dev Omar, his artist name is mm. back. I, uh, you know, use the beats I make for him all the time on the intro of this podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm actually what you're listening to right now on the audio version is that beat that will be the new single coming out friday september 17th Mm -hmm. very excited for it uh don't have a pre-save link yet will in probably the next two episodes uh there's a whole process that the uploading has to go through um before it can become available for pre-save but anyway um yeah we worked really hard on this song it's called telly uh which is you can look it up urban dictionary it's about hotel um so the song itself is not about a hotel. <laughs> That'd be kind of weird, but um, it's about all sorts of wondrous and exciting things. Um, and I actually feature on it too, because Devon and I are kind of the dynamic duo crossovers with R and B and rock, apparently. Um, <laughs> but I'm really proud of it. I'm really proud of how it turned out. It was kind of a shoot from the hip thing when I was down in Texas last. And then we um, ended up turning it into this really good song that I feel is the most professional sounding song we've ever done. Um, Mm. And, you know, you and I were talking about this on the live stream. We are live streaming on Facebook right now, but he, uh, I, I think that he's come a long way with his vocals, with his writing. And the thing is, he puts in an average amount of effort into it. It's not to say he doesn't try. It's not to say he's not passionate about it, but the results that we've seen, he gets hundreds of plays on YouTube without any videos of it. It's just a standard audio version. He averages more monthly listeners on Spotify than my band does. And I play live all the freaking time, you know? (laughs) Mm -hmm. And, and so the reason I mentioned that is because it's good and it's connecting with people and people like it, you know? Um, People really like the tracks. And so we're going to see where this next wave of songs will take us. We got this one done. And again, it will come out on September 17th. Um, mm-hmm. But we have a, uh, a two more that we're going to work on that should be out uh, late this year, early next year is when I would expect them to come out. So um, kind of dynamic duo. I make the beat, produce it, you know, mix it, master it he writes the lyrics and does the vocals on it and everything. And it's worked out for some really good stuff so far. So I'm excited to see where this one will take us. I'm excited for people to hear it. It's called Telly T E L L Y. Um, mm-hmm. And you'll be able to pre save it on a streaming site near you very soon. Um, <laughs> but we can talk about more and eventually, eventually stay tuned to audio listeners. You'll get, a release date sneak peek <laughs> when it goes live. <laughs> Heck yeah. So, um, but yeah, man. So very excited about that. Uh, and we have a lot of things that we want to talk about today, namely mm-hmm. two. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I have had a conundrum about living situation for many, many moons now. And mm-hmm. I'm at a crossroads. I feel like, and it's something that I want to ask you about in real time. Of course, we're live mm-hmm. streaming on Facebook now, as we always do. Facebook.com slash the ketchup cast, or just search the ketchup podcast and you'll see our logo on there. But I want to have this discussion in real time and get your opinion mm-hmm. and kind of you know discuss why people make certain living situation choices that they do, mm-hmm. uh, buying, renting, etc. Uh, and mm-hmm. then we want to talk about the return of the Lamborghini Countach, man. So people, you know, I want to mention this when we were younger, right? Bringing back cars, bring back mm-hmm. you know, the Mustang after, well, they, they bringing back a, a more retro style of the Mustang. They brought back the Camaro and it was a muscle mm-hmm. car, you know, brought back the Challenger and it was a muscle car. It's not how things go anymore at all. Yeah. Yeah. They bring back. Yeah, the think Maverick. about the planet, man. Right? Yeah. Apparently, we have to think about this big giant orb that we live on. So <laughs> bring back um, the Maverick. It's a 
light duty pickup truck now. And Lamborghini is bringing back the Countach, which is interesting for Lamborghini to bring back anything at all because they don't do mm -hmm. that. Uh, they have no reason to. They just continue to move forward. But the Countach mm -hmm. is arguably the most famous Lamborghini of all time. Yeah, yeah, I I feel like it's the Lamborghini that most people think of, especially if you were in the '90s. Um, yeah. It's the Lamborghini that you think of the most when you think of like Lamborghini. It's just that shape, the iconic yeah. shape. It's the perfect poster, uh, um, pinup poster uh, car that everybody in the you know every kid in the '90s I feel like had. I know I had one. Oh yeah, no, I had. A uh, poster of the Diablo when I was a kid, but the mm. Lamborghini I always think of is the Gallardo, uh, the smaller yeah. model um, that came mm -hmm. out in the mid two thousands. That's why I always think of as a Gallardo. Um, I love those cars, but Countach is iconic. It's what people associate mm. with Lamborghini. So bringing that back, mm. but in a hybrid form, um, very interesting. Also interesting mm. to me that they're not bringing it back in an all electric form be honest uh you know yeah. another example is the hummer coming back all electric the mm -hmm. f-150 lightning model mm -hmm. coming back in all electric which i love that i love the branding of that i think that's awesome oh yeah no i think that's that's perfect to be honest yeah it really is that's good clean branding right there but um yeah just a lot of interesting returns and they're not it's really just a name it, that barely has anything to do with the actual product itself so Lamborghini yeah. is bringing that back what does that mean for the future of automobile I mean we know this is just the latest in another uh, wave of cars going electric or hybrid or anything like that and um, you know even though most of us can't afford those supercars they typically influence over time uh, the cars that we do drive on a regular basis, you know? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's an interesting discussion and we want to talk about that and a whole lot more. So I say we go ahead and get into it. Yeah. Oh man. There it is. Man, this live stream dead, man. It dead. Well, you know, it's a, it's a Sunday afternoon, so it's, it's understandable. Um, I, I think I would a live stream. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I mean, I feel like if it's anything like I remember when I was a kid, right? My Sunday uh, afternoons, you know, I'd be back from church. We have to, we just ate. Um, and then uh, I take me a nap, take me a nice nap, man. Yeah. Uh, no, I get that. And then I wake up, you know, around four or five or something like that, maybe three or four or five or whatever. Uh, and then I do my other stuff and then that's when I'd probably be watching live stream now granted that was also when I was younger so <laughs> I feel um, that. but you know just the thought. I mean right now I would be watching NASCAR in Indi the uh, Indianapolis Motor Speedway if we weren't doing this <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so um, but yeah so I get it. but you know what people are gonna hop on it's gonna be lit mm -hmm. they're gonna so, pop on. no they'll pop on They'll definitely pop up. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go ahead and do this. Um, three, mm -hmm. two, one. What's going on, everybody? I'm John. And I'm Dennison. And this is the catch up. Bro, when oh, we talked man. about doing away with that. Hmm. Oh, yeah, getting rid of the, the intro. Just that part, because. I mean, by now, people should fucking know who we are. <laughs> 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 hey, man, Sorry, it's, it's classic. It's classic to the to the thing because that's the thing. Uh, not everybody's gonna know because we may get new listeners yeah. every single time. Yeah, I guess so. it's true. And like even like Bradley Martin, who is the guy that I kind of stole that from, but he still goes, <laughs> "What's going on, guys? I'm Bradley Martin." So he does do that, I guess. And like, mm -hmm. it's literally the name of his channel. So <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, you can yeah. you can get it like a shortened version or whatever like that. But I think it's always still really good, especially for like older or new listeners, um, because, of course, newer listeners already know this stuff. They don't really care that much. Yeah. But um, I don't know. I feel like it, it still works. I get that. OK, cool. <laughs> well, there's your consensus right there. This is <laughs> the other added benefit of the live stream, man. We get to just talk shop and 
you know, mm-hmm. and plan out plan out the next steps for the podcast, man. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Now, I've had the craziest of times. So, like, I'm wearing a, not wearing our own merch today. I'm wearing some Miles Candy merch. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm, so yeah, cool. I'm wearing some some Nike merch. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's iconic actually. Um, but they, uh, I've had the hardest time, man. Because speaking on this with this guitar behind me, um, hashtag hardest time or, mm-hmm. or pause. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, go ahead. <laughs> because um I have had a recorded audio over the brickyard, my favorite of venues, for mm-hmm. two months. And I have not been able to get my hands on it because they have an issue that whenever they plug in a USB drive, the whole computer locks up. Oh, lovely. And then when they pull it out, it unfreezes. So I have not been able to get my hands on that audio. It was supposed to be recorded directly while uh, they were recording video, while our, my mm-hmm. videographer was recording video, but his computer didn't take it for some reason. Um, mm-hmm. And so I just have this audio just sitting there, and I cannot access it, and it's driving me nuts because um, I would have the sickest video that we could use for for, uh, promo purposes to like send to different venues and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, I'm just bummed by it, man. I'm like, dang, I really would love to see that. So I tried to get yesterday and I literally dropped the thumb drive off and happened to end up at Brickyard last night. And they're like, yeah, here, watch. This is what happens. So like, I've been told by one sound guy, like just come here on night. Chuck's here. Cause he knows the system better than I do. So I was there when Chuck was there and Chuck was like, yeah, well, Mike's back in from out of town. So you might want to hit up Mike. And I was like, I don't even know who Mike is. <laughs> was like, just contact Jeremy, man. Jeremy from our band. He also does booking at Brickyard. And he was like, contact Jeremy. Jeremy will hook you up with Mike. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I just want the freaking audio, man. Can yeah. You, can you email it to me? Is that possible? <laughs> like, <laughs> I'll do anything now, you know. Mm-hmm. We, got, we had our version of Teenage Fever that was recorded. Um, I think we did Fire Away and we did, uh, I want to say Don't Let Me Go was the, was the other one that we did. Mm. And it was, well, maybe not that. I think it was that though. Yeah. I mean, what, I think you, are they running like Vista or something? <laughs> dude, I don't even know, man. Maybe I don't even know what how it is, is it actually, locking up with the uh, with the flash drive. That doesn't make any sense. I don't know. He showed me he had the application open for the digital faders because they have a whole soundboard too. Mm-hmm. But plugged it in, and it literally, I watched the faders freeze. I watched it happen. I was mm. like, "What the heck, man!" Like, and you tell me y'all don't have Google Drive? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So I just I want to hear it so bad the whole thing like I don't even care about the video right now I'm like I just want to hear what it sounds like you know mm-hmm. um but yeah I know it was pretty nasty so um anyway got my uh set list framed right over there actually uh oh someday they'll be worth some um but man let me just let me just pull that out real quick hold up. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> we have all that time right now. <laughs> oh, that was probably it. Yeah. Although I had technical difficulties on that song, but we got right here. There it is. Oh man, look at that. So these that are my notes. Dope. Yeah, I know. I made like different ones for each guy, but like you can see it. Like I'm telling. Which guitar to grab, what tuning to grab, like all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. Those are all my notes there. Um, and so, yeah, got all that. We did Fire Away. We did a cover of Three, Three Days Grace's Chalk Outline. Mm-hmm. Did unreleased song Before It Kills Me, which will be coming out on the upcoming No Signal EP. Um, mm-hmm. Let's see. We did Remember When, which is a new Chevelle song. Did Buried Alive. Uh, which is one of my early ones, a Teenage Fever, which is our cover of a Drake song, which ended up, by the way, becoming the favorite part of, uh, for everyone that was there. 
and then uh, <laughs> what has become and don't let me go which is our two our two ones but it was funny because like even the guys in the band were like man i don't really know if we should do this like i don't know if people are going to get it right mm-hmm. and i was like trust me the way this is going to turn out live for a full band people are going to love it i promise you and I just had this feeling about it. And thankfully I turned out to be right. Um, that was what people told me was their favorite part of the set was our cover of a rap song, which <laughs> kind of wild. <laughs> but it was like more the moody vibe after because like, we, we go through the whole song and then afterwards we just kind of jam. It's this kind of slow jam blues thing. Mm-hmm. It was awesome. It was awesome. It was fun to play, but people really liked it, which was cool. Um, and then it turned around and Daniel, you know, our bassist, he was like, you know what? He goes, uh, we should actually just like rotate rock covers to rap songs. He was like, that'd be something that makes us unique. And it's, it's a good idea, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, it is. Um, not everybody does that. So now he wants to do it like regularly and like rotate the songs that we're doing. So um, he wants to do The Hills Have Eyes by uh, The Weeknd. I'm like, dang, that would be sick. Mm, do a that would be of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that'd be crazy. That'd be really crazy. So we'll see what comes from that. I think it'd be pretty dope. But um, anyway, so all right, well, let's go ahead and just slap right into it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I got someone in the crowd here who like. That reference to <laughs> oh yeah what's up slappers oh, i'm in the i'm in the goofiest of moods today i can uh, explain it i feel kind of <laughs> delirious right now um you get good sleep man good. that's what nah, usually man, uh, makes it for me man nope we're not did getting not, good sleep did not get good sleep uh, i went to bed late Mm. Man, I know. I'm supposed to be healing from a surgery too. What the? Mm-hmm. Got to go to sleep it's early, good. man. I know. Man. Early to I bed. Early to wake or something like that. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, quick to bed, quick to rise. <laughs> something like yeah, that. Yeah, there you I go. There it is. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I know. I need to take better care of my body. Mm-hmm, been eating, you do, bro. Been eating like a, a horse at the trough lately, man. It's not been good. <laughs> <laughs> I've been making all kinds of gains. I ain't been going to work out either. Oh no, man! <laughs> well, I have to take time off because of surgery. I can't. I can't be just going in there bench pressing two twenty five again. That's true. That would be you know bust yourself right open, man. Be problem. <laughs> no, man. <laughs> Hold me, man. I'm gonna bust it. I'm gonna bust it open, <laughs> <Yeah>. man. <laughs> <laughs> a whole new me. I'm a busted open. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, Nicki Minaj didn't even know what she was talking about when she wrote that, bro. Mm-hmm. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a busted open. Um, <laughs> well, did you get your uh, you, you got your results from uh, the uh, X rays, right? No, uh, uh, in your lungs. No, no, they scanned me the day of that biopsy. Okay. So so they um that won't be till Tuesday. So Okay. okay. I go in I that the day was Friday, of, that's why. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I go in, they they'll scan me ahead of time. And they'll be like either they'll be like, There's nothing there, you're good to go. Or let's go ahead and do this thing. I don't think they're going to find anything. I actually already feel better. Like I can breathe fine and all that kind of stuff. Everything that I was dealing with from that went away. So, okay, uh, that's good. Um, genuinely don't find anything. So, yeah, yep. So I'm not worried about it, man. But <sighs> all right, let's go ahead and do this. <laughs> mm-hmm. You ready? Yeah, what? I'm ready, man. Always. <laughs> All right, here we go. Three, two, one. All right, well, before we get into our topics, we have the usual things that we want to promote. Uh, you know, we again are live streaming on Facebook, but you can also follow us on Instagram, Instagram.com slash the ketchup cast, or just search our podcast over on Instagram. We also have our YouTube channel, 
uh, that we will be adding these live streams over to uh, in the coming weeks as well. Uh, so mm -hmm. just search the catch up with John Denson. You'll see our logo on there and we're adding new content all the time. Um, and our official website. So we're not rocking the merch today. Uh, kind of switching it up, but we got all kinds of good, clean merch over there. We got uh, t-shirts, hoodies, hats, mugs, uh, phone cases, mm -hmm. greens, beans, potatoes, tomatoes, as I say. <laughs> um, and, chicken, uh, turkey, chicken, turkey, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, you got all kinds of options over there. You can buy it at a really good price and all the money goes directly to support us. If you want to support the show, that's one of the best ways to do it, but the best way for you and for us is to leave us a rating and a review wherever you're listening to this on, whatever podcast app you're listening to this on. It will expand the reach of the podcast and help us connect with new listeners and help us continue to grow. So please just leave us a rating and a quick review. It could say one word. Wow. Right? Something like that. Um, anything. Just uh, let us know how we're doing. Let us know what you think about the show. Uh, it'll really go a longer way than you probably realize to help us continue to grow. Um, and then also get in touch with us directly on any of those sites or email us at the ketchup cast at gmail.com. Yep, Tell them what that's it is. The ketchup cast time. at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Good. Good. So now um, <laughs> I want to make sure they remember that. So uh, yeah, yeah. I know. Those are all the best ways to connect with us and uh, support the show, as I said. And um, we really look forward to growing this thing over the rest of the year. We got some really cool things planned toward the end of 2021 and uh, kind of involving all of it. You know, the music that we were talking about earlier, the uh, website, everything. So we want to be able to connect with you guys when we do that. So like I said, give us a follow over there. Um but yeah, we got a couple of things we want to talk about. And the first thing I want to ask, so I have been searching for a house, a rental mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for like <clears throat> four or five months. Okay. Yep. I've had options on the table. I've had options of moving in with my brother somewhere, you know, maybe even uh, moving in with Blake Ellis somewhere. Mm -hmm. I've had him on the show a while back. Um, and those would be fine. You know, I wouldn't mind living with either of them, but just where I'm at in life, I would love to live on my own, you know? Yeah. Uh, have my own space and finding that in Wichita has been a challenge to say the least, a huge mm -hmm. challenge. And here's why. So the thing about Wichita, there is this line and that line is Kellogg highway, AKA us 54. And mm -hmm. anything south of that line is not really a good place to live <laughs> for the most part. <laughs> you don't want to live there. Um, mm -hmm. is, it's, and may not be the nicest thing to say, but people in Wichita and surrounding areas call, can, refer to those people who live down there as South Enders because it's completely different culture down there. <laughs> completely wow. different culture. We're talking drug use, alcoholism, but like, I'm not talking about weed, man. You, you see a lot of people walking down the sides of the street, strung out and all across the South end of Wichita. It's, mm. it's wild. It's really wild. So, um, definitely don't want to live in those areas. And the problem with it is you can find a nice house that has whatever I would be looking for, right? Garage, uh -huh. nice board, um, and a decent ish price. But mm -hmm. it's in a great bad part. Appeal, all that good stuff. Yeah, great curb appeal, all that good clean stuff. But it's in a bad part of town. You know. Mm. Mm -hmm. Um, like I said, good price too. Or you can find something in a good part of town. Price is okay, but it's overvalued for what the home is, right? Mm. So mm -hmm. I'll give you this example. I'll give you this example. I found this house that at night and from the curb, literally the curb appeal was pretty good <laughs> on this house. Right. Um, it mm -hmm. looked fine. And I was excited about it. I scheduled a tour of it. I was, I was even impressed because the way the housing market is right now, just to get a tour is dang near impossible. 
people are buying or mm-hmm. renting these places sight unseen. I, I lost so many opportunities for houses based off of people just booking it sight unseen, you know? Uh, wow. Yeah. And so I was just impressed. I was getting a chance to, to look at it. And so upon closer inspection, mm-hmm. coming up to the front house. Okay. It looks all right. Open the front door. Don't even get to inspect the inside because I'm overcome with this incredible smell. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like mm-hmm. not incredible in a good way. It was overwhelming. This, this. Mm. Okay. And it, I don't know what it was. It smelled like natural gas to me. Mm. That's which is not good. Else. Uh, by the way, fun fact, natural gas does not have a smell. Mm-hmm. They they put an odor in there so people can know when it's leaking. And it was pungent. Okay. And I I was like, wow. And my parents were with me. My mom mentioned it first. You know, wow, this is a really strong smell. I go, yeah, this is not good. And the guy the property manager is kind of rushing us through there. Mm-hmm. And I said, so what's the deal with the smell, man? Is there a leak somewhere or something? What, what's going on with that? He goes, what smell are you talking about? And I said, well, you know, it kind of smells like natural gas. And he goes, oh, well, he goes, that's interesting. You're the first one to visit the home that's ever mentioned that. And I was like, do you not smell it? And he goes, no, I, I honestly don't smell anything. And I was like, there is zero chance that that's true. Yeah. Zero chance. You know, some people have like more sensitive noses than other people. Mm-hmm. Man, I'm pretty sure a snake could have smelled this, dude. <laughs> <laughs> snake doesn't even have a nose. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, Voldemort could have smelled this thing, man. <laughs> <laughs> Homeboy doesn't even have a nose, man. So... Yeah, I, it was bad. It was really bad. And then on top of that, the house was dirty and had scuffs mm. in the walls and everything. And the layout mm. of it was okay. It wasn't bad. And there was a big yard. And um, overall, the yard looked like it had been taken care of. It was weird, too, because they said no pets. But the current owner was there, and he had a small dog. So <laughs> I was just all kinds of confused. It just, it just reeked. The only thing that reeked more than the smell was the sketchiness of the whole situation, you know? Mm, mm-hmm. And I was like, how do you not, how are you going to flat out lie in my face to say you don't smell this? So yeah, exactly. the price was right on the cusp of what I'd be willing to pay. And mm-hmm. I would have paid it if I walked in the house looked fantastic. You know, if it looked yeah. fantastic, I'd probably be moving in there next weekend, you know, mm-hmm. but it doesn't. And so that's kind of the thing. That's that's really the example I can give you. The best one is that these houses are very mediocre and often overpriced on the good side of town, right? Mm-hmm. And I've been looking for five months. And so I'm kind of at this breaking point where I'm like, what do I do? Do I call it and buy a house, take a first time buyer loan? Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. Because as soon as I switched on Zillow from rent to buy, all these good options opened up. All these mm-hmm. good options opened up. I was like, man, this looks awesome. I'd love to live there. I'd love to live here. One of the places. <laughs> you know? Everything uh, changes. I mean, I'd, be like, I'd just be buying houses all over. I'm like, um, yeah, like uh, uh, one of these places was in Delano, which mm-hmm. is a district we talked about on here that's kind of blowing up, especially with the new baseball stadium. And uh, the property value of those is just going to continue to skyrocket as bigger business comes in there and nicer apartments and living situations come in. Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, that'd be a really good investment. So that's kind of where my head is with that. You know, I don't know how long I even plan to live in Wichita. I don't know. Uh, Mm It depends on where life takes me with certain things, but hypothetically five years from now, that property value is going to go way up even if for no other reason than just what's happening nationally right now um, Mm -hmm. with inflation and whatnot. And so I was interested in that or 
succumbing to the way of apartment life, man. Mm -hmm. I'm ashamed to say it. <laughs> no, not really. I'm not ashamed to say it. I'm just trying to avoid it because, well, as you can see on the live stream, I like to do loud things like this guitar mm -hmm. right behind me. Right. And mm -hmm. there are ways that I could set up a rehearsal space where it'd be pretty much silent. Um, I, I think it'd be pretty cool. Even drums. I could get electronic drums and plug those into an interface and we practice that way. Uh, mm -hmm. But the actual recording part. And then on top of that, you know, just watching TV or listening to music at, at leisure time and having to be considerate of others, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I just am not in a place where I want to do that. Like I kind of want to have my own space, you know, but there are these really nice apartments that are uh, near where I live now and they seemed pretty well insulated and they were very nice. They were very nice. They had garages and all of that. I don't know, man, I'm kind of at a crossroads. And so I wanted to ask what your thoughts are on buying versus renting versus apartment life. Mm -hmm. I know you've researched that stuff very deeply. Uh, so I thought mm -hmm. it'd be a good topic for us to discuss. Yeah. Yeah, no, that is a good topic. Um, so I guess I can start off with my thoughts, right? So I've um, done apartments. Technically now I'm in a, a townhome and I've had a roommate and I have uh, not had a roommate. Um, and then I've also been researching into buying a house because that's ultimately the goal, right? I mean, I feel like that's everybody's goal uh, ultimately is to yeah. be able to buy a house and not have to rent um, because you are building up some sort of equity at that point. Yeah. Property ownership is the most sure investment you could ever make. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so. that's actually what a lot of people's um, like, actually one of the bigger factors of people's retirement funds is their house. Um, yeah. So uh, I guess here are my thoughts, right? So for me, um, when it comes to renting an apartment, uh, if I do have to rent an apartment, I want to make sure that it has a decent amount of sound deadening or sound insulation, which I'll say in a lot of newer builds tends to be a little bit harder to find. Um, when I was looking around here in my area, um, the apartments that I came across, there was only really one that I could think of that had relatively really good sound deadening and at that point in time the only reason why it was that way was because when it was originally built it was supposed to be a condominium so you know condos they have to have a lot more sound deadening because people are literally buying units instead of uh and they're in the units are usually bigger but um people are buying using units instead of renting them and then it eventually got changed over to renting so that's the reason why their sound and deadening was better. Um, and it had some other features that were a little bit nicer or whatever. Um, sure. So that's my thing, right? Uh, because my previous apartment, um, while it was new, it was brand new, uh, very nice. Uh, it was great when I first moved in because it was still new. There were still people who were still... Um, moving in to the building. So at that point in time, I didn't really have that many neighbors. So it was actually relatively quiet because there wasn't that much traffic outside of my went out of my door and all that good stuff. Um, but as people slowly started to move into the apartment, that's when the issues started to arise. And I guess that's when the sound started to elevate it as well. Um, because I, I was able to actually tell hey, I can hear my neighbors um, to, an, to an extent, uh, I can hear them, where it's not just like loud bangs and pops, I could actually hear their voices. Sometimes yeah. if people were yelling loud enough, I could actually hear whole conversations. So um, that, wasn't, that wasn't fun. So I'll no. say that is one of the bigger downsides to it. Now, apartments do have great amenities. Um, mm. 
that do help. And at the same time, you don't have to worry about those maintenance costs that you do have to worry about when it comes to um, buying a house, right? Um, right. Because right. you are, when you buy a house, you are on the hook for everything that entails with that house. And depending on the shape that it's in, you get all that wonderful stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So there are yeah. a lot of other tacked on uh, things uh, with that. So, um, so that's kind of my take first on apartments. Um, mm -hmm. And I guess one thing that I did want to ask you, so if you were to go for an apartment, what kind of apartment would you want to go for? Like what type of, if, if what, what's your, you know, ideal optimal case for buying it or getting, uh, getting, in a, getting in an apartment, what kind of amenities and what kind of setup would you like it to have? I think that well, kind of can help. Yeah. I mean, believe it or not, I can really take a, take or leave a pool, you know, um, mm -hmm. the amount of times I get in a pool <laughs> is very minimal. Uh, cause I don't like taking baths with other people, <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but, uh, those type of things I can take or leave, you know, I, I'm hardly ever going to go in a welcome center and just hang out and have coffee and eat their fruit and whatever. But, uh, garage necessity. You gotta have a garage. Um, mm -hmm. Would you want a parking Absolutely. garage or would you want an individual garage if you can? Well, we don't have any here. I know you just moved from one that did. We don't have any here in Wichita that have a parking garage Got um, for the apartments. Uh, at least none that I can think of right now. So, um, well, okay, actually, that's not that's not true. But this is different, though. This was a parking garage that they converted into apartments. So... Um, the, the parking garage is kind of built in obviously. So, uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, I mean, outside of that, no, I, I, it'd be a garage situation. Um, I would want a first floor unit, uh, so I don't have to carry an amp up and down the stairs, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. um, I would want an end unit, of course. Um, mm -hmm. if it, if it's that type of setup, I know that, some apartments are that way. Others are, you know, you have one on each side and there's a staircase in the middle. So, um, mm. I'm like you where I don't necessarily want people above me, but at the same time, I think the lesser of the two situations is me not having to carry 50, 60, 70 pounds of equipment up and down the stairs all the time, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, with that, um, you know, I want it to be well insulated. I want it to feel spacious inside the apartment. Um, obviously, you know, Wi-Fi and things like that. I, uh, of course, I want that. Um, those are the main things that are popping in my head right now. Are there any things that I'm missing that you were curious about? Um, I'm trying to think. So, I mean, I think those are some of the big ones that really matter. Um, yeah. And so the insulation. Uh, and that's not just for me, but it's, I don't, I'm like you, I am like anyone really, you know, you don't want to hear your neighbors. Yeah. You don't want to hear them arguing or watching TV or anything like that, man. If I can, if I'm watching the Cowboys, but I can hear the chargers game next door, that, that, <laughs> that annoys me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. So those are my thoughts with that. Okay. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Um, um, yeah, I mean, I'll say having a first floor apartment is really nice, especially when it comes to moving and stuff like that. Um, and it is nice too, that you don't have to worry about someone else being below you. Uh, yeah. I dealing with that was not fun for me, um, mm -hmm. with my previous apartment, but the apartment that I had before then was actually nice because we were the bottom unit. Um, and, uh, we didn't have, it wasn't, it wasn't that loud or we didn't have to worry about like being loud for someone below us. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I think that makes sense. I guess. So I guess my other question is, you know, with all those constraints and stuff like that, have you found any that are in the right price range? Because I feel like that's the other thing. Sometimes apartments that kind of meet all those criteria tend to be a lot more, expensive um, I know. yeah that's the thing so i i 
would have a much more desirable price to go with than that. Uh, but I look at like what I pay now, you know, I pay um, roughly four fifty a month for living and rehearsal situation. Mm-hmm. And so I take that into account of what I'm paying now. And then if I roughly double that, uh, but get my own place and then my own rehearsal situation, you know, that's money well spent to me. Um, mm-hmm. But it is still more money, obviously. Um, and yeah, so I am aware that even up here, those places are going to be anywhere from 800 to $1,100 a month. Mm-hmm. You, you know, Mm-hmm. Which is funny because for me it sounds yeah, especially amazing. ones are in good areas. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Well, the thing is too, you know, there's some awesome lofts downtown. Really, really great lofts. But I know, at least from the ones I've been in, their walls are thin. You know, and. So if you're in a central location inside the loft, you're not going to be bothered by that. But if you have anything up against a wall or, you know, maybe you're even your bedroom, you're going to hear the people, man. I went uh, a couple of years ago to a party at one of the lofts downtown and Mm. you know, music was cranked the whole time. Somehow it didn't bother anybody, but at the same time, it really wasn't a place I wanted to live, you know? Yeah. Um, and and that's just me personally. That's just from the surrounding area. And like I, I don't really want to live downtown. Also, their parking situation is just a parking lot, you know. Yeah. Um yeah. at least I'm pretty confident that's the case. So yeah, um it is kind of a tricky situation, but yeah, and, and you're right. I mean, the living costs here in Wichita are good. I have a feeling that they're gonna go up because there are these apartments there's a sycamore get this i think even with the higher cost of living in dallas i think you'll be blown away by this there are these um new apartments called sycamore apartments that are Mm -hmm. in delano area okay and very nice very nice they're called like luxury apartments right but they you can spend thirty five hundred dollars a month to live at these apartments wow yeah that that uh that's a lot i mean that that is there are some apartments i remember seeing um in dallas that are like that which is insane Mm -hmm. it's like why would you do that yeah that you could buy a house (laughs) or at least that's a i think that i should i should i should really change that phrasing that you can have a mortgage payment as that much that's probably a better i mean i've looked at houses where like estimated well mortgage. for less than that of course yeah but i've looked at houses like estimated mortgage is like and of course it's not a 30 year plan but you know it's like 600 700 dollars you know and, yeah. and i'm like man and that's that's the temptation for me is that mortgage price it looks really good you know that monthly payment looks really good you do have the greater responsibility and i've never even lived on my own. So just to dive in head first to living on my own in the house that I own seems a little daunting. Um, mm-hmm. So this, yeah, those are really the majority of my debate and, and hang up mm-hmm. and, you know, discussion with all of it. So, um, so I guess with that, like moving over to like buying a house. So I yeah. guess the big thing I feel like for houses is yes, you know, you're, you're building equity, you're, you're, um, you're buying something that you can like really, really, you know, do exactly what you want with it and stuff like that. There's a a lot of really cool things that come with it, but I think the upfront cost is the hardest thing for most people to get through. Um, I mean, it's one reason why I haven't bought a house or anything like that. Um, the down payment. Yeah. The, it's the down yeah it's the down payment that you have yeah. to go through and then at the same time um uh, this is a factor for some other people too but it's a lot of um mortgages uh or uh, loan providers for mortgages base a lot of their criteria heavily on credit score 
And if someone doesn't have yeah. a good credit score, then it makes it really, really hard for that person to get a loan. And yes, you can go by, at least from what I've learned from my research, is that yes, you can get a first-time home homeowner's loan, which means that one, you have a lower down payment. I think the, the minimum is like 3% for a down payment. Um, yeah. But some of the negatives that I found with that is, and it does give you a, a really good sizable amount of money that you can use to help you get a house and help you get into a house. I mean, that's the whole point of the program. But I think the thing that I've found is that one, you have to deal with sellers. Uh, a lot of sellers don't like first time home buyer um, uh, loans because they feel mm. that those, uh, the people who get those loans don't have good credit scores. So they're less trustworthy for them to, for the deal to fully go through. And so a lot yeah. of realtors who are, you know, doing the negotiations because it's usually realtor to realtor, right? It's your mm. realtor who's helping you buy the house. And then the seller's realtor who's helping, um, helping the sellers sell their house, talk mm. and stuff like that. And usually the, the realtor who's selling, who's helping sell the house will look at a first time home buyers. And if they have any other loans, so like a conventional loan or something like that, they yeah. will probably look at the conventional loan first, even if both of the parties are pretty much the exact same. Um, that conventional loan just looks better because there's a higher security there. Because if you want to get like a conventional loan, I think a lot of them, the minimum is like 10%. Uh, sure, that you yeah. have to have down just to get that loan. Mm -hmm. um, and and oh I, and the other thing with the first time home buyers loan is that you have a permanent PMI. So that's a principal instant interest uh, deal. Uh -oh. So it's essentially yeah. you're paying interest on the loan. It sounds really funny, okay. but yeah, you're paying interest on that to have the loan to continue to pay it. So sure. most, even if you do uh, like a conventional or whatever like that, usually you'll have a PMI. If you don't pay the full 20% down, you'll have a PMI for until you get to that 20% mark, right? Mm -hmm. While you're paying your mortgage or whatever like that. Once you hit your 20% mark, that goes away. Um, yeah. But with the first time home buyer's loan, that stays with you for the end of the loan. So okay. You know, if it's a 30 year mortgage and you pay it off, say in um, 20 years or whatever like that, well, you've had PMI for that whole point. You've gone past that 20% mark, but you yeah. had you have PMI for that point. So yeah, that is one extra added um, expense that you have to do. And that's one thing that I've always really got annoyed with is that you have to do that with that specific loan. So that's a thing that you have to worry about. So it's not only that you have to contend with sellers who may not want to sell to you because they think you're not trustworthy. Um, but with the first time home buyers loan, I should really say you also right. have to contend with that PMI and some other things that you have to deal with, but it does help you at least get your foot in the door. Right. Um, I sure. just feel like, in a market that's so saturated and so um, competitive, first time home buyers loan is really hard to oh, yeah. first time home buyers who are using that loan. Or it's really hard for them to get a house. Yeah, um, no, I get that. I get that. Um, no, these are all good points that you're making. I, it's a tough one, man. It's a tough one to decide. Mm -hmm. I feel like, Long term, you know, if you continue to increase your income and just for the sake of having your own space, I feel like buying is, you know, a good decision. Um, mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. when you're just trying to get your feet wet and, uh, you know, explore living situations and, and build up credit, the apartments are good or a rental home, you know, but like I said, I'm having a hell of a time finding a good rental <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. So it is pluses and minuses to both sides. I would say, and I think I really just got to decide what angle am I coming at it from? I think I would say, you know, 
am I coming at it from a wanting to get that experience of, of living on my own and that kind of thing? Or uh, am I looking at this for a long-term situation, you know, an investment, right? Mm -hmm. yep. So I, that's kind of why I need to decide and go from there. Um, but hopefully that helped some people listening. I know you're super knowledgeable on that, man. Um, mm -hmm. So thank you for sharing your knowledge with us on that. Um, of course, man. It's good stuff. So we'll see what happens. I'm probably going to hit up those apartments on uh, Monday, but keep an eye out for any other good opportunities as well. Because, I mean, people get it. You know, I would just love to have my own place, just my own house, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Renting, renting or buying. I know people understand where I'm coming from with that. But let's jump over to our next topic real quick. Let's talk about the return of the Lamborghini Countach, man. Why don't you introduce this, and I'm going mm -hmm. to pull it up here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, it was on, I think it was either on Friday or Thursday, um, Lamborghini unveiled that they are bringing back the Countach name. Uh, and actually, the, the, it looks... It's a really, really good looking car. Like it's, it's really got it's good. cool because it's like the perfect, I feel like it's the perfect um mixture between uh retro and new and modern design I styles. Agree. I completely um, agree. so it looks it looks really pretty. It's a really, really pretty, really cool car. Um, I think they did an amazing job on the styling because I mean I think they understood too that they had to do really well on it for yep. people to want to buy it. Um, but anyway, it's a, uh, the crazy thing about it is other than the cool, beautiful styling that they did is yeah. uh, that it's a, it's a hybrid. So it yeah. has a, and you might have to correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it has a, uh, it still has a V12. It's got a 6.2 liter V12 engine, but then it's got that mated to a 409 horsepower electric motor. Jesus. Um, wow. To uh, essentially, you know, give it tons and tons of horsepower. I, don't, I couldn't remember if I could see the exact horsepower figures um, that they had, but. I think it's supposed to be somewhere around 800 horsepower altogether or something like that. Uh, um, so 814 combined power. Um, yeah. So yeah, maximum combined power is 814 CV, which is how they are um, measuring rather than horsepower, you know, uh, the combination mm -hmm. of, well, it is, it is horsepower, but it's how they're measuring them combination of electric output and uh engine output so mm -hmm. it can go from zero to 60 in just about 2.7 seconds uh mm -hmm. it can go zero to 120 or so in eight seconds top speed mm -hmm. of 355 kilometers an hour which if i remember right is about 215 220 uh 221 yeah yeah so that that is incredible. Um, but yeah, you were right on the power. I like it. I want to say something too about this photo that we're sharing uh, on the live stream. We have it up on the screen. The uh, I, I, what I love about it is you can look at the new car in the forefront mm -hmm. and the one in the backdrop here. I'm gonna zoom in. Well, not as much as I thought I was, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but in the background, that's the original Countach. And so you can see the natural progression of the styling here. The silver is still the same. Uh, the mm -hmm. wheels look better, you know, of course, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, the, you can see this natural progression. I love on the lip in the front there. It says Countach. I think that's super cool. I got to say, this is one of the best looking cars that they've come out with for a while, in my opinion. Um, mm -hmm. It just, that looks fantastic. And so um, going back to what you're saying, you know, it's got a V12 engine, like you said, 48 volt electric motor uh, combined with the two. Now, what I'm interested um, is how they're doing this. Uh, it looks like those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you said this, right? 
Um, so the electric motors directly power the wheels, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the engine powers the whole drivetrain. Um, so it's interesting because you see so many uh, companies, right, that are going to strictly uh, electric technology, you know. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Ferrari's even working on an electric supercar. Is that right? Uh, I believe so. I believe so. Yeah. I think it's in the it's in the works. Um, was it? I think it's uh, Mercedes is also working on an all electric uh, supercar mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. as well. I think they've been working on that one for a while now. Um, yeah. But yeah, Which yeah, no, a lot of supercars of... a little different than these, but um, yeah, it is. But. Um, but a, a lot of it's really interesting because a lot of manufacturers are all starting to move towards this uh, greener deal. Now, I feel like, for me at least, I feel like Lamborghini is a little bit slower on the on the take because if you really think about it, right? We had what was it three, four years ago? We had uh, Lamborghini when they came out with the uh, LFA or not the LFA, sorry, uh, the La Ferrari. <laughs> Um, and then Porsche came out with their, uh, uh, 918. Um, and then, uh, McLaren came out with the P1 and those were all hybrid electric vehicles. Sure. Um, and I feel like Lamborghini is a little bit late because I feel like a lot of the other manufacturers who are going to create like hyper cars and supercars and stuff like that are, starting to divert themselves to going full electric. Yeah. Where I feel like Lamborghini was probably one of the last holdouts when it came to, you know, let's try to start doing EV stuff. Um, yeah. Now they're coming in with this cool, really, really cool, amazing hybrid electric vehicle. But uh, I feel like at this point we should start already moving towards that electric future instead of, or full electric, I should say. Um, instead of the hybrid electric. Well, I agree. And what I actually find more interesting than that is uh, Volkswagen Automotive Group. (laughs) Um, Go ahead and make that an acronym. (laughs) Um, (laughs) They they own Lamborghini. They own Audi, Mm -hmm. right? They own a lot of companies. They're one of the largest automotive firms in the world. And Audi, you know, has been touting its new e-tron, um, I believe, RS7, I believe. Um, it's just a beautiful car. Beautiful car. But they, Audi has largely been on the forefront of this, you know, with uh, diesel technology, diesel electric technology, um, or diesel hybrid electric technology, and then just full electric now. Mm-hmm. Um, Volkswagen's been doing the diesel thing, obviously, as we all know, because of diesel gate. Um, and, and the reason that I bring this up too is Audi uses, um, or is in the formula E racing series, which is an all electric series. And they've used that to develop their own electric technology. Mm-hmm. And if I'm not mistaken, man, and correct me on this, if I'm wrong, but the Audi R8, Shared a chassis with a Lamborghini car. Is that right? Uh, or was it a yes. Porsche? No, it, it shared it with uh, a Lamborghini. Uh, it was it shared it with the um, the smaller Lamborghini. The Gallardo, uh, right? It was the Gallardo. No, Huracan. That's what it was. Oh, the Huracan. Well, yeah, it shared it, the, the chassis Huracan. and I think the engine too with uh, the Huracan. Sure. Yeah, and. So they share a lot of technology. So that's why it's more interesting to me. Audi has developed this. They've been involved in this electric racing series. And then Lamborghini, one of, if not the most famous supercar builder in the world. Um, I would say probably Ferrari still is, but still they come out with a hybrid electric. And it's not to say that that's not cool. This technology is very cool to me. And they're using it more for the sake of, performance you know like you see in formula one and all of that um mm-hmm. then they are uh you know for going green now actually one thing i learned this is really interesting to me 
uh formula one is on the precipice of if not going to fully do it next year with their hybrid electric uh racing that they have it's carbon neutral mm. yeah oh wow that's don't even that's pretty cool because other countries are more you know, strict about that than we are. Some parts of the U S are more strict about that than we are. And that's been a hang up for them to try and get more races in the United States. But uh, they claim that their footprint will eventually, if not by next year, I can't remember. I need to rewatch that, uh, but be carbon neutral so that it will not impact the planet at all uh, mm. from the world's largest racing series, which is pretty cool. So yeah, that's pretty amazing. Um, well, reading this, uh, I'm, I'm looking at the hybrid technology that they're using here. Lamborghini compla- or I'm sorry, claims that provides three times the power of a lithium-ion battery with the same weight. Talking about their supercapacitor technology. Mm-hmm. Uh, it does not reflect the new hybrid and pure electric vehicle systems that the Italian automaker is currently working on. Uh, mm. So there'll be a new batch of Lamborghinis with hybrids and electric vehicles rela- uh, released later this decade, as we obviously can assume. Um, so it is interesting, you know, it almost by that standard does make this a throwback. You yeah, know, that's true. By that standard, the fact that they are, they have brought this back and then they plan to, you know, release fully electric vehicles. And I'm sure Potentially some other technology. You know, I saw some things recently of, of some new biofuel uh, that companies are working on. I would love nothing more because I want to continue to hear engine noises. I've said that. I've been very consistent about that <laughs> on mm-hmm. this podcast. Um, mm-hmm. I want to continue to hear engine noises. And I know, you know, you do too, but you're not nearly or necessarily as set on as I am. I get it. But... um but yeah, hey man, it, if we can make it carbon neutral. <laughs> well, apparently that is a possibility from what I understand. So um, that's kind of an interesting thing to me. But yeah, being that they are moving forward with this other technology and then they bring back their uh, Countach and its hybrid technology, it does in it in and of itself make it a throwback, you know, and that's what's really interesting mm-hmm. to me about it. Um, so it deliveries will begin the first quarter of next year. I and they have not yet released the price of this. <laughs> yeah. Um I think I heard and, speculations that it's supposed to be somewhere around two mil. Uh or actually, sorry. Um if I'm reading this correctly, it's supposed to be somewhere around the house of three million dollars. Wow. Good um, Lord. Yeah, yeah. Early reports suggest a tag, uh, a price tag of Three million of excess of three million dollars. Wow! So Jeez. not even it, it may not even be exactly three million dollars. It may actually be more than three million dollars. So you remember like 2010 when we were like uh, the Bugatti Veyron hit a million and everybody was like a million dollar sports car. That's insane. Yeah. Now I remember that. Like yeah, that was yeah. like the new ceiling of. You know how much you want to pay for a a supercar or a hypercar at that point, point. Um, yeah. and then it's funny because I think Lambert or um, Bugatti broke their own like price limit when they released the Super Sport. Yeah, yeah. Um, it just continued to go up, and then they realized there's a market for it from you know uh, soccer players and uh, rappers and all that just to buy them and put them in their freaking garage, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, which is crazy. I, again, we've talked about not this even before. drive them. I know. And we've talked about this before too. I could not work for the world's finest car designers knowing that this would never get driven to the capacity that I've built it to do so. <laughs> you yeah. Know? Yeah. It, it would, it would, 
hurt so much if I was it just an hurt. engineer who's creating all of this stuff. It's like, man, this thing's going to drive amazing. It's going to do this and that. And then no one drives it, right? You I never know. see it around because it's locked up in someone's garage because they see it as a collectible. Yeah. Um, this, don't get me this, wrong. It is. Yeah. You know, it's oh, a it great is. sound investment. Yep. Yep. No, I agree. Um, and this car here just is asking to be driven, if you ask me. Now, here's what mm -hmm. I, um, I did find while I was speaking on. I actually was combining the two stories into one. Uh, FIA, which is the governing body for Formula One and other racing series, mm -hmm. uh, has what they claim is 100% sustainable fuel made from biological waste. Um, so mm -hmm. it's not going to smell too good. But... <laughs> But it's made from biological waste, and they believe that the power units can run off of it, and it's their goal by 2030 to be carbon neutral. So imagine mm, 2030. You know, again, a lot of this technology that comes from racing influences our daily driving cars, um, especially with you know the prevalence of hybrid electric technology that started in racing, and now. You know, it's become more and more prevalent, and, and really, it started in the 1800s. <laughs> you know, <laughs> electric cars, but um, but the push, you know, has become more and more so with the development of the technology and racing series. So it would be interesting if we could create a hundred percent sustainable biofuel, because electric power in and of itself is not carbon neutral at all. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. it's not. You have how the uh, power is produced, which in this country is largely by coal um, mm -hmm. and, and clean coal is one of those amazing, fantastic uh, political tropes to try and convince the general public that you can still use coal power. <laughs> it's totally yeah, fine. Exactly. Yeah. Um, it's, not. it's not. But then you also have the waste of batteries, you know, when you have to dispose of them because they get weak. And mm -hmm. man, I mean, they can be recycled, but largely are uh, going to a waste. Um, so really interesting that that could be a possibility and really just the overall push of sustainable technology and efforts to be more respectful to the planet over time, you know, um, mm -hmm. I find it fascinating. I don't know at what point that would translate to the general public, you know, from going from racing uh to <laughs> normal cars but um it is it is cool to think that sometime somehow every time we go to the toilet it's gonna be power in our car <laughs> <laughs> yeah man. i mean yeah. hey who knows we might start in hearing spartan noises everywhere we go oh, it's man. just a car starting up yeah the, the <laughs> turbo waste gate has a totally mm -hmm. different meaning now um, yeah <laughs> Yeah, well, that's a good discussion, man. It's an interesting. It's a beautiful car. Um, mm -hmm. It's definitely going to be a cool one to look at if somehow, by some amazing measure, we happen to see it. So, uh, very cool. I'm <laughs> glad we were able to talk about that. I think we had a good discussion on all of this, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm glad we we're able to do it one more time. If you want to support the show, please leave a rating and a review. Hit the subscribe button. We have new episodes going live every Monday. And check out our website as well. We got all sorts of merch. We also have all of our episodes and all of our videos located in one place. You can find it all right there. So please check that out. And that's really it, man. You got any other parting thoughts that you want to leave us with? Uh, I mean, I just want to say, um, I think, you know, with all this talk of uh, going electric or even going carbon neutral and stuff like that, I think it's just a, it's a great thing to see that we're, we're, taking those steps to start getting closer, you know, the auto manufacturers and stuff. So I think that's just kind of one of those things that I think we should all start to continue to push for. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. And I think that the push is on, um, for one reason or another, we'll see where it all goes. So thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. And we'll catch up with you next week.